Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. We have already solved every single math problem from this book. If you are interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now we are in the process of redoing the problems and we are on page number 176. Please turn to it. Page number 176, problem number 172 is what we are about to do. Let's see what it has to say. 172. In question number 172, they are simply asking us for the what is the sum of even integers between 99 and 301. Pretty simple, straightforward question. We simply have to figure out the sum of all the even integers between 99 and 301. Let's see what we can do. The very first thing we need to understand here, before we go any, before we go, before we make any progress at all with the actual solution of the problem that we have to solve here, is to understand some basic underlying concepts here. For example, the very first thing we need to understand, the very first thing we need to be aware of, is the fact that if we have, if we have Evenly spaced series of numbers, evenly spaced series of numbers, then in that case the average of the entire series, the average of the entire series, the average of the whole series from the beginning till the end assuming that the series is of such a nature that the numbers are evenly spaced then the average, in that case, the average of the entire series equals simply the average of the two endpoints let's take one thing at a time let's first understand what we mean by evenly spaced series for example for example, if we have 3, 5, 7, 9, and 12. 3, 5, 7, 9, and 12. Is it an evenly spaced series? Well, let's find out, shall we? We go from 3 to 5, that's an increase of 1. We go from 5 to 7, that's an increase of 1. We go from 5 to 9, that's an increase of... I kept saying increase of 1, it's an increase of 2. These are all odd numbers, it's an increase of 2. 3, 5, 7, 9. But what happens when we get to the end part? It is no longer an increase of 2. 9 from 9 to 12 is not an increase of 2, it's an increase of 3. This series is not evenly spaced. An evenly spaced series would have been something like this, where every, every time we go up by the same increment. Now when you're dealing with something like this, when you're dealing with something like this, of course there are two ways of figuring out the average one is to simply realize that the average of this entire series instead of doing it out 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9 plus 11 divided by 5 we could actually do it all out manually physically or another option is to simply realize that if it's evenly spaced then the average of this series is the middle number that is assuming that you can locate the middle number that is assuming that we have the knowledge of the entire series here we're not going to write out the whole series from 99 to 301 Here's a quicker way. The quicker way is to understand that the average of this series is simply the average of the two endpoints. The endpoints are 3 and 11. The average of 3 and 11, 3 plus 11 is 14. 14 divided by 2 is the same as 7. You see? The average of the entire series is the same as the average of the, of the two endpoints. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. One more example. Let's do it here instead of erasing it. Let's do here. 
5, 8, 11, 14, 17, 20, and 24. Is there an evenly spaced series? Is there an evenly spaced series? Let's find out, shall we? From 5 to 8 is the increase of 3, then 8 plus 3 is 11, 11 plus 3 is 14, 14 plus 3 is 17, 17 plus 3 is 20, and 20 plus 3 is 23, we have 24 at the end. Again, it is not an evenly spaced series. In order for us to make it evenly spaced, the last number needs to be 23. Now, assuming that this is what we are dealing with here, assuming that this is what we have here, an evenly spaced series, then we count the numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Again, there are 7 numbers here that makes our life very easy because the average is the middle number, which in this case is 14. Now, again, again, one more time, another way to figure out the average is to simply take the average of the two extremes, the two endpoints, 5 plus 23, 5 plus 23 divided by 2, 5 plus 23 is 28, 28 divided by 2 is 14. As you can see, the average of this series is simply the average of the two endpoints. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. Maybe we have something like this. Maybe we have something like this. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, and 18. Again, before we do any work at all, we have to first ask ourselves, is that an evenly spaced series? It is evenly spaced series because it's all multiples of 3. It's just 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. So the average of this series is going to be the average uh, average of this series. There are two ways of figuring it out. One way is to actually look at the midpoint. Well, we have one, two, three, four, five, six numbers here. We have six numbers. We do not have odd number of numbers. We have even number of numbers. Therefore, the average of this series is going to be the average of the middle two. The number that lies right in the middle, and the number that lies halfway between nine and twelve, is going to be one and a half more than that, and one and a half less than twelve. Something that is one and a half more than nine and one and a half less than twelve because the difference is three. We split the we split the difference evenly, obviously. So that number is going to be ten and a half. Again, that was one way to figure out. Another way to figure out the average is to simply take the average of the another way to figure out the average of the entire series is to simply take the average of the two endpoints, three plus eighteen, three plus eighteen over two. Three plus eighteen is twenty-one. 21 divided by 2 is 10 and a half. Now where does this take, where does all of, where does all of this take us? Well it takes us actually a long distance actually. The series that we are dealing with is this. Okay, we are done with all of this thing. I'm going to get out of your way for a second too. To give you an unobstructed view. Here is the series that we are dealing with. The series that we are dealing with all we have to figure out is where does it start and where does it end? That's all it is. That's all we need to figure out the average of the entire series. Well, where does the series start if you're looking for the sum of even integers between 99 and 301? From 99 and 301, the very first one is 100. And then it's going to be 102, 104, so on and so forth. And what's going to be the very last one in the series? The very last one, the very last even number before 301 is 300. That's it, we're done. We simply have to figure out the average of these two numbers, and that's the average of the entire series. So the average of the entire series is the average of the average of 100. And this is actually so simple that I don't even have to do it on the blackboard. It's silly. It's just this is just idiotic to actually go around adding 100 plus 300 divided by 2. The average is 200. The average is 200. The average of our entire series is 200. Now, all we have to do now at this point is to figure out how many terms we have in this series, how many numbers we have in this series, and once we know how many numbers there are in the series, and once we know the, now we know we know the average. Once, if we can figure out how many there are in the series, we just multiply the two and we get the answer. That's all. So let's find out how many there are. Well, how many are there in the series? How many numbers in the series? How many numbers? in our series. In our series. Remember our series begins with our series begins with 100. It goes 102, 103, 104, 106 all the way up to 300. That's what it is. Well from from 101 to 200 
from 101 through 200, there are 100 numbers from 101 through 200. Half of them are even, obviously, and half of them are odd. Nothing, nothing or shattering there, of course. Half of them are even, 50 of them are even. Similarly, from 201 to 300, again, nothing or shattering. Half of them are going to be even and half are going to be odd. So half of them are even. There is 50, there is 50 right here, there is 50 right here. And don't forget our series actually begins with 100. This one starts with 102. See, we're going from 101 through 2, from 101 through 2, 200. From 101 through 200, the very first even number is 102. So 102, 104, 106, 108, all the way up to 200, there are going to be 50 even numbers. But we have left out 100. So how many do we have to all together? We have 50 over here, 50 over here, one over there. We have total of, we have total of, or can we make a note? We have a total of 51 numbers. We have a total of 51 numbers. That's it, we are done. We are getting very close to being done. I need the room obviously, so we need to erase all of this thing. You can do it actually over here. We have a total of 51 numbers, therefore the sum is going to be, the sum of these numbers is going to be, the sum of these numbers is going to be, the number of numbers, the number of numbers, times their average. We have 51 numbers, times their average, which we found out to be 200. 51 times 200, 51 times 200 can be written as 51 times 2 times 100. 51 times 2, of course, 50 times 2 is 100, so it's 102. So it's 102 times 100. Unless I made a mistake. Is it 51? Oh, no, it's not 51, it's 101. 50 plus 50 is 100, and 1 is, it's, it's, it's not 100, it's 51, it's 100, 101. It's 101. So it's 202 times 100. I made a mistake. 50 even numbers is from 101 through 200. 50 even numbers from 201 through 300. And of course our series begins with 100, not 102. So 101, 101 times 200, which is same as 101 times 2 times 100. 101 times 2 is 202 times 100. We just stick two zeros. 202, we stick to 0, the answer is 20,200. 20, the final answer is, the sum of our series is 20,200. And I was about to pick 102 times 100, uh, times 100, there would have been 10,200. I hope that's not one of the answer choices. Otherwise, I, oh, it's not actually, lucky for me. That was it. Let's go to the next one, shall we? That was it. Give me one second and we'll move on to the next one. Number 173. In 173, we start out with W women and M men. This is what we start out with, to begin with. To begin with. Then what happens? Then, then three women and two men are added. Are added. And the question simply is, what are the odds of picking a woman at random? So the new total is, the new total is going to be, since we three women are added, it's going to be W plus three women. And since two men are added, we start out with M, so now it's going to be M plus two men. 
the art of picking a woman at random well, I suppose that will depend on the guys some guys strike out anyway I'm, I'm being silly the odds of picking a woman at random would simply be the number of women we have there is W plus 3 which is the total number of women divided by the total which is this guy right here W plus 3 plus M plus 3 W M plus 2 plus W plus 3 that's it so that is W plus 3 is the total of number of women W plus 3 is the total number of women, women and here is the total of men, men and women together so M plus W M plus W plus 2 plus 3 which is 5 that's all it is that's all that one was too simple let's go to the next one number 174 number 174 Number 174 deals with the concept of prime factors. It deals with the concept, with the notion of prime factors. And if you have not watched the videos that I asked you to watch in the last, in the yesterday's video, there are the two videos I would like you to watch before you please continue watching this video. Uh, watch prime factors, prime factors. Watch math problems, math problems. Day 47. And math problems day 48 day 47 and day 48 just type in math problems or math problems for GMAT if you like day 47 and 48 watch those two videos in those two videos we learn the notion of prime factors, how to find prime factors of a given number, and that's what this problem deals with. So this one is going to be prime factors par, part, it will say part part one of two, and we'll say part two of two, the 47 and 48. Here they're asking us how many prime numbers between between 1 and 100 are factors of 7150 are factors of 7150 this is just a bloody awkward way this is just a very cute way very annoying way of saying what are the prime factors of 700 7150 what they're asking here is what are what are the prime factors of 7150 that's what they're asking and that's what we did that's what we did in these two videos math problems 47 math problems math problems day 47 day 48 look for or you can just or you can just simply just search for prime factors part 1 of 2 part 2 of 2 and that's what we did there it's very straightforward very simple 7150 is a very large number and the trick here is to split it into two manageable parts and this is how we split it. We split it into 7,715 times 10. 715 times 10 will give us our 7,150 and 10 of course is very straightforward. The prime factors of 10 are 5 and 2. 5 times 2 is 10 so the prime factors of 10 are very, very straightforward 5 and 2. Now we simply have to figure out the prime factor of 715. Let's, let's do it very quickly. 7 plus 1 is 8, 8 plus 5 is 13, 13, the sum of the digits is 13 and 30 is not divisible by 3, so we can't divide it by 3, let's divide it by 5. You must always check to see if it's divisible by 3 before you go to 5. How many 5's in a 7? 7 has 1 5, the remaining 2 goes and joins the 2 becomes 21, 21 has 4 5's, the remaining 1 goes and joins the 5 becomes 15 and 15 has 3 5's. This number is an odd number, we can divide it by 2. Let's see if it's divisible by 3. 1 plus 4 is 5. 5 plus 3 is 8. It's not divisible by 3. It's not divisible by 5. 
Is it divisible by 7? The answer is not divisible by 7 because if you divide 14 by 7, you're going to have a 3 left over. After 7, we're going to look at uh, 9 is not a pri prime number. How about 11? Is it divisible by 11? Let's find out. 11. How many 11 in a 14? 14 has 1 11. 14 has 1 11. The remaining 3 goes and goes, joins this guy becomes 33. And 33 has 3 11s. Voila. The question was, what are the prime factors of 7115? The answer is, the prime factors, prime factors of 7150 are 2, right here, 2, then 5, right here is a 5, then 11, and finally 13, right here. 7150 has four prime factors, 2, 5, 11, and 13. And that's all there was. It has four factors. The answer is D. The answer is D. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.